It's all connected. 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 It's all
the fear is the driver of the paranoia. Um, yes. Yeah, I know that's a, that's probably the worst Yoda anybody's ever heard. Because um, I can't. I kind of like that. It. It's, it's now on my list of favorite Yodas I've ever heard. <laughs> exactly, this <laughs> girl. Do or do not. There is no try. Um, yeah. So somebody says, oh, "I'll try to try." There's no try. Yeah. Um, a- a- anyway. <laughs> I'm sure we've got better Yoda speakers uh, in the audience, but uh, I, I am uh, not uh, one of them. <laughs> I'm not, not really good with well, – I, I mean, I can do, you know, weird voices, but not any, you know, anything that – Can you do weird voices? You could probably do weird voices. Uh, I'm not a big on weird voices. I I work with I I I am uh, married to a dude who does a lot of voices. But you I, I never heard your voices though, with me. Uh well, you know, whatever. I I I like uh, your Jamaican voice. My guys. Jamaican Yoda? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> see see da, da says he doesn't even know what a Yoda is. <laughs> oh, it's a Yoda lady who Yeah, that's a little right? different. That's a little different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a dude from a knock knock joke. Knock knock. Who's there? Yoda lady. Yoda lady. Who? <laughs> I uh, I always go back to the Ricola commercial. Oh, I don't even know what that is. It was those guys in their I don't know in the Scottish Highlands or wherever. They're going Ricola. Oh, I remember those, but that was like that was ostrich. You know. What? Right? Wasn't that like Austrian? Ricola. <laughs> I remember. Uh, as a well, some kind of throat lozenge or something. I don't know what the hell they are. Yeah, we have those. Okay. Ricola. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, so they're, I, I think they're yodlers, uh, but they played those they big, were... they, they played those big old horns, you know. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Without having all my facts checked or anything, I I. I vaguely remember reading about how one part of the medieval ages was um, dominated a lot by paranoia and dark side. And we found out afterwards it's because there was a mold fungus in the weed that when you eat a lot of it, it kind of sits in your brain and it turns you paranoid and, and dark sided. Yeah, that, that was the, the, the ergot that grew in the in the uh, rye grain uh that <laughs> basically worked at like L S D. Um but when a whole town of people eats this uh moldy rye with the ergot in it, uh then they all kinda of trip out and they don't know what what's going on because they they were just eating damn sandwich. And then suddenly they're seeing pink elephants strolling up the road. <laughs> <laughs> but you think maybe all this worldwide paranoia? Well, it's not worldwide though. I, I'm gonna assume it's it's mainly focused in the countries where uh, that has that you know, you you call it um, the you call it the clap media, right? Clap yeah, the clap. Man. It's not the clap. Yeah. It's not the media. It's it's propaganda. They call it yeah. the, the people call it the mainstream media, but it's not mainstream. It's absolutely uh, fear media, global elitist <laughs> propaganda, which is corporate lame-ass propaganda. Corporate it's lame-ass propaganda. Yeah. Uh, the clap. Advertisement propaganda. And and it, and it works so well with with the term clap because clap is another word for venereal disease. Um, <laughs> so, which, I thought venereal was, you know, meat. There you go. What? Well, <laughs> yeah, you could get a venereal disease on your meat. Um, but that, I don't want to. That's, no, that's, 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 yeah. <laughs> a- anyway. <laughs> uh, the yeah. clap, that's a term I came up with back in the day. Uh, you, you, were you around when I was doing the RLM news show? Um, I, how am I supposed to know that? I, I don't know. I, I don't I remember it. you doing daily news. I wasn't okay. around then. Yeah, I did a five-day news show, Monday through Friday. Um, how come you don't do, like, just a half an hour news show every day now? Uh, because it, it was meaningless. <laughs> but you're fun when you do it. And that was my purpose. Was to, was That's to, the biggest meaning of all, Grinia. That my, was just that no was, meaning into anything if you're that, having fun. That was my purpose, was to break down the propaganda. But see, what happened was 
those that those that listen to me every day, and it was a, a pretty good sized crowd. I got a nice crowd every day listening to me do my news. Um, they 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 learned. I mean, they they caught on. They they picked up yeah. on on the on the tricks of of, yeah. of of the of the clap. Um, and so when you show them that this is what they say, this is. Uh, buried in there, the, the truth is the buried. NLP, the nasty NLP. The, the, yeah. the truth, the truth is buried in their lives. So they didn't need me anymore. Every everything, everything was was you know uh, self perpetuating. The people that listen to the show, they learned how to. Uh, oh no, that, I don't believe that. The world definitely needs you on the radio more. Well, I'm on three days a week. Well, isn't that enough? Well, one of them is a fake, though. You just play music. Yeah, but that hey, you know, the blues is good for the, <laughs> the, the the blues is good for your soul. It is. It is. It is. I'm just saying, you could do like a little news thing. Yeah, I could. I, I, I'm going to speak for the majority, the silent majority. Oh, so you're like the representative, the unelected, the un, unselected representative of the people. Of the silent majority, and I'm going to say we would appreciate if you did that, good <laughs> <laughs> We oh. would come and listen. It was a lot of work. That show was a lot of work. I did a one-hour show. I know. That, that, I know. A one-hour show. It took me several hours of prep, and then and then the post productions, and yeah. You could just do like a itty bitty twenty minute segment. Yeah, but they still take I every mean, this. Yeah. That, no, yeah. I'm not going to okay. do that. Okay, no, um, don't feel personal. Well, besides, we, got, we would appreciate it. We we got people now. We got Hal Anthony. We got yeah. uh, doing you know, and his is not really news, but he covers a lot of news. Um, and and now we got the the new guy, the redneck dentist, and mm. and and he's covering some you know current event topics uh, and things like that, and also giving some very interesting other kind of stuff. Um, and Vin E covers some kind of current event stuff uh, although with 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 a, with a certain bent towards uh topics of of uh, appeal to him which makes sense right um yeah. so we we got some news and um we, uh, and and uh and then we get uh people like free enslaved to pop in and spew out all kinds of nonsense and and then leave <laughs> <laughs> So, just messing with you, free. I love you, free. Wherever you are, I, uh, you may be wrong about everything, but I still appreciate you. Um, <laughs> Nobody's wrong about everything. Uh, all right. Well, most things. <laughs> I'm going to go with free makes a uh, mean Thai curry. He I'm probably do, does. When it comes to Thai cooking, he got it right. Yeah, he, he, he appears to be quite the chef. Uh, and, and he loves the Thai food too. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he uses he likes to use good natural ingredients and yeah. So, uh, yeah. He, he, so do you think maybe some of this paranoia is also linked to food, like it was back then? Well, there there's there's fear of not having availability of food, which would lead. But you to, don't think there is shit in the food? Oh, well, that, certainly, certainly there is. Point. All kinds of crap. I mean, they, they, for whatever reason, the various goonerments decided, probably being pushed by large corporations, uh, to allow for all kinds of nastiness to be in all of the food, in the water, in the air, uh, and, and, and everything. Um, so, yeah, they, they're, I'm sure there's, I mean, but that's, that's, um, that fear is, uh, well founded. Uh, that's that. I mean, if you should, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be a concern though? It is a concern, More than and, but you, but you should be paranoid uh, about the food and the sources and and uh, the the processes of getting that food to you, uh, or the the production of that food uh, because of the things they do. And it doesn't matter whether it's plant based or animal based because they they destroy them all with uh, the, the nastiness they do. I mean, if you look at some of these big, uh, you know, cattle farms or chicken farms, they, they treat those animals horribly, and they do bad things. They pump them full of all kinds of hormones and uh, just nasty stuff to make it make them grow 
at an unnatural rate uh, so that they can, you know, grow a chicken that's supposed to take a year or something to fully mature to grow in two months. Uh, and then it, but it's full of all that that nasty all those nasty chemicals, and so you get that chicken in in the grocery store all packaged nicely in the cellophane there, and uh, the, in the foam crap, and the, and you bring it home, you cook it up, and you eat it, and you're eating that stuff, you're eating those hormones. Uh, say the same with same. not to mention you're eating all that um, fear and distress that that living being felt absolutely when it was living because you're eating that living being right so if you're eating like a chicken that's in stuck in some cage in a little box fearing for everything and living in constant stress that's what you're eating too yeah yeah oh yeah no question um and and so it it goes the same with 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 cows or uh pigs you know for for beef and pork but also The eggs, I, the, the eggs you're eating. That I mean, okay, yeah. they they didn't do anything directly to the eggs, but they did to the egg producers. Uh, yeah, the eggs uh, are. Yeah, that's part of the chicken. Right, and and if you're drinking, that that's a living being. And and if you're drinking cow's milk, oh, the, the nastiness and that stuff. I, I I like I like cow's milk. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's full of. I mean, it's disgusting. See, that's where you don't see. That's where you're not a Viking, though. Why? Because you don't drink milk. I drink you milk. Can't be enough I, I drink milk, but I drink almond milk. <laughs> 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 and I and I don't drink I don't drink the big brands, uh, the the what Blue Diamond or Silk, uh, because they put all kinds of crap in there and in those too. Uh, I forget the name of the, the stuff that's in there, but it's really bad for you. But I drink. Uh, there's some some some. Uh, natural brands of uh this one that i use full circle is what they call it uh anyway so i I, I, I understand i understand organic cow's milk from happy cows from a dairy that you know is 10 kilometers away from here okay good it's a little sad that I, they have to take it from the dairy ten kilometers to some central, and then some delivery in the grocery guy comes and brings it up here. But um, I'm guessing that's how um, societies make money, though, right? Sure, yeah, it's got to go through all these steps and mm-hmm. raise the price with each step, and anyway, mm-hmm. well, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like the biodynamic. You know about well, biodynamic farms? I am not familiar with biodynamic farms. Okay, well, they have some general rules, right? One of them is it's that within the farm system, you can't add anything to the system and you can't waste anything from the system. Okay. So if you have cows, <laughs> which produce a lot of... Um, Manure? Yeah. <laughs> then you got to have a field where you have to use that manure. Okay. Because you have to be in a system where you don't produce waste and you don't introduce additives. Yeah, they could use use that manure to make uh, methane to power their farm. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah no, that's good. Yeah. 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 And then also, when it comes from um, biodynamic, it also means that they harvest a lot according to the planet. So they sow on specific dates and they harvest and they believe that the um, um, positions of the planets, according to Earth, has an effect on the produce. Hey, so they're an astrological, biodynamic uh, Well, farm. that's within the biodynamic. I'm not sure if the people that does the milk I'm getting are to that side of biodynamic <laughs> farming. <laughs> but they should be. You know, they have these rituals that are... Uh, aligned with the astral body. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right, but on the the fear thing or the uh, paranoia thing, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the paranoia driven by the fear, of course, um, mm-hmm. and, and the fear driven by those that would seek to control you, uh, mm-hmm. because that that's why they pump out all the fear is to control you because they know that you'll become a paranoid little bastard. 
uh, once you've been pounded in the head hour after hour, day after day, week after week for your entire <laughs> life. Um, because when you're when you're in fear and you're anger, mm-hmm. you know you're angry. You are you are usually in a state of reaction all the time, right? Right. So you don't you don't you don't get to another frequency of action or of contemplation or of reflection. Right. So those deeper levels of consciousness where that really requires focus and tuning out all that noise. Yeah, yeah. If you're constantly living in all that fear, which is just noise, anger and fear, it's noise. Right. Well, you know, um uh, you can look back uh to 9/11 the big 9-11 thing, where for yeah. days and days on end, every station, television station, every uh, website, mm-hmm. every news outlet was pumping out fear, 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 fear. And mm-hmm. a lot of people sat there watching that hour after hour and endlessly. Why? And, Why? and, and they were they were paralyzed paralyzed but why uh, be, because of the, of the way it was pushed across and it doesn't matter that it none of it happened according to the way they said it happened but uh, but but because they were being told that it did that somehow these yeah. these 19 crazy guys from some foreign land um <laughs> I, mean, I would be bored. Okay, I I wouldn't be able to just sit and watch stuff for hours. Oh, but 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 it, it was like a, a syndrome, you know. Uh, people people just just were apparently sitting there watching this, just glued to it, and 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 just in total fear, total paranoia. I and and I don't know what they thought was going to come after that. I mean, let's say it was. It actually happened. The, the way that the government said it did, and that these these crazy Muslims got on these planes and hijacked them somehow with box cutters, which mm. seems very unlikely, um, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> just, let's just say that's the way it happened. They were able to force force their ways into the cockpits and fly these airplanes into these big buildings, which then collapsed that free fall speed into their own footprints. Huh? Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so buying that fairy tale uh, and that these guys took whatever number of years to prepare and plan and train uh, f- for this event to occur, what did they think was going to happen next? Where Where more... Uh, of these guys going to get into more planes, or were they going to suddenly do other weird things that that no? I mean, it was over. Okay, I have a question because right? you're there. Yeah, I have a question though, right? Mm-hmm. If 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 let's say these people, those um, Easter Bunny, Osama oh, bin Laden, evil creatures, you know, monsters, they're real, right? Mid Eastern bunnies, okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Mid Eastern bunnies. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I never believed Osama bin Laden to be real, just you know. But um, oh, he was a person. I mean, I we, we I've, he was a person. I don't know that he would have. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Uh, uh, Ninety-nine percent yeah. positive. If they really wanted to harm America, though, right? Yeah. Wouldn't wouldn't they have chosen one of your biggest uh, nuclear power plants, for instance? Oh Wouldn't no that no, no, no 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 devastating. No, they wanted to take down the financial center. Yeah. Yeah. So the the taking down the financial center, what what better way than 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 going after the twin towers like that, right? I'm just saying, wouldn't that have been devastating to America as a as a continent? I guess. I I mean, uh, pretty much any time America is attacked, uh, it's the worst thing that ever happened in the world. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the way it comes across. Is, and, that is and, what and, I was thinking here in Denmark, though, right? When all that happened, and they started with the terror here, and what if we're going to be? A, uh, what if they're going to come here? And I was going, oh well. Um, then let's just you know, 
hurry up closing that nuclear power plant that's just across the water in Sweden. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I would say that if we're bombing each other, power plants is, you know, nuclear power plants is kind of devastating to have around. Sure, sure. And, you know, it'll, if you really want, you know, you can just take down the entire electric grid, uh, which will eventually destroy those those nuclear plants, but uh, it will immediately destroy pretty much everything else. I mean, just just, yeah. just just look down there at Texas and what happened when they lost power for a day. It, it was it was all hell broke loose. That mm. power power was down for a day, and everything was just screwed. Um, <laughs> but, but like but like um, when when I grew up, right? Ever since the eighties or something, maybe the seventies or so, the big uh, most biggest danger that uh, Denmark was when it comes to fear propaganda mm -hmm. it was the nuclear oh well yeah I mean nuclear it is brought up with, uh, cause through the 80s we had a lot of um, protests and everything and um, Denmark is declared nuclear free zone well yeah and you can I mean you can look at the various um Things and I've that, tried, I've tried that, going down that programming of fear because I know it's not rational. I know that it's a lot of propaganda because anything that state has been telling me so much, you know. Yeah. I, I'm assuming that here was, was what like communism was where you were at. But with us, it was the nuclear. Right. Oh, yeah. Communism was, was a big fear here for a long time under the McCarthy era. Um. <laughs> nuclear, nuclear is the big fear still here. Like the big, we even got Sweden to close the nuclear power plant that's closest to and us. And that's because you, you, you over there embrace the communism. No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody embraces uh, communism. <laughs> well, of course there are the fringy people, right? Well, yeah, well, yeah. we do, we do have like a Danish communist party. I know, but 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 you're socialists, so. Uh, I don't. I don't think we are more than you are in in a lot of ways. Well, no, but you admit it. That, see, it's not that you're more socialist than the United States, but you admit to your socialism. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. The, that's the big difference. Uh, although I, I think the uh, United States anymore is pretty much admitting to their their love of the socialist ways, um, and and, mm -hmm. and trying to drive things that way. Although it's not actually socialism what we have here, but. And it probably isn't where you are either. Uh, it's totalitarian technocracy. Um, We're getting to technocracy, yes. Oh, big time, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and and part of that, I, I have a story here that I brought up that I'm going to share with you um, about that, uh, which ties into the paranoia. I mean, because mm -hmm. um, as many of us here at RLM and various other pro places around the interwebs uh, talked about when they started uh, producing or getting ready to produce these various vaccines uh, were all the nasty things that were going to happen uh, if for those people that did not accept the poisons being pumped into their veins. Yes. So here it is. I'm going to share it with you. This is on blacklistednews.com. Some guy named uh, Derek Bros from The Last American Vagabond wrote this. Hmm. As the European Union announces they are preparing to implement vaccine certificates, the largest airline association is also preparing to roll out their version of the controversial immunity passports. Uh, on, on Thursday, the European Union's 27 political leaders held a five-hour virtual call to discuss the future of reopening, stuff that should have never been closed, uh, travel across the continent. Uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel uh, told reporters, uh, the leaders have agreed that we need vaccine certificates. The leaders <laughs> have agreed that we need vaccine certificates. Uh, Kobe passed to you and I. Uh, Merkel also sought to quell fears about the use of such certificates, stating it will certainly be good to have such a certificate, but that will not mean that only those who have such a passport will be able to travel. About that, 
No political decisions have been made yet. <laughs> but can I interject? <laughs> Certainly. Because the in in late January the EU also signed a uh, resolution, and you can look it up. It's called Resolution Twenty Three Sixty One. Okay. And it very clearly states that um, they recommend a resolution is a law, you know, lawful recommendation from the EU to the uh, states of the countries within the EU, right? Mm -hmm. Where they they recommend in the resolution that uh, there will be no discrimination against people of any kind uh, due to vaccinations. There will be no forced vaccinations, whether direct or indirect. There will be no pressure on people who do not wish to be vaccinated. So that's 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 the EU official stand on how vaccination should be treated in the national states. Okay, but they can do it in another way. They can do oh, it. So. They can do it through through uh, commerce. Uh, that will be discrimination. Uh, maybe. Uh, no, but, but no, that, no, that's very clear. Uh, that that's very clear that that will be interpreted as um, discrimination. They do already have a um, vaccine demand on air plane flight, right? Uh huh. You had that way before COVID too, though, right? No, no vaccines on air flight before COVID. No. Well, you couldn't enter certain countries. If you didn't get vaccinated, I I don't know about that. I've never entered. Well, I have entered Mexico and Canada, but that was way back in the early days, in the eighties or seventies. Um, yeah, so I. I so I'm, I'm kind of because, as you say, the EU are doing both things. Right. So, so as they write this, they are also pushing their vaccines. They're pushing the vaccines. The, the and Danish Parliament, the Danish Parliament are just just um, negotiated or, or are negotiating the new epidemic law because they made a change last year with a sunset clause. So they had to uh, negotiate a new epidemic law before the, uh, before today. Mm -hmm. So uh, yesterday they had to be done with it. And um, there is no mention of vaccines or there is no forced vaccines in that. But there are a lot of forced testing Yeah. So they're going to, as I see it, what I'm seeing happening over here is it's going to be a test passport. It's going to be testing. So you won't be able to go to a, a concert without showing um, a new negative test, or you won't be able to go there and there to do that unless you can show a test. Okay. Well, that's today, but tomorrow it'll be vaccines. Um, anyway, let me go on a little bit here. Uh, the, the, the discussion around passports has grown in recent months with the UK, Denmark, Sweden, Iceland, and Spain all considering some method of verifying whether an individual has been vaccinated or achieved immunity from COVID-19, which would go back to your testing, I guess, yeah. whether they've achieved immunity from something that doesn't actually exist. Um, <laughs> UK officials have also discussed the potential for the use of digital verification tool for domestic travel, which I, I don't know what that means in, in the UK. What you get to travel to Scotland or Ireland, I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I noticed Flash is saying he couldn't go to Scotland in 2011 without a flu shot, um, which was probably some other fake pandemic at that point. In the in the U.S., plans for immunity passports are being developed. On January 21st, Joe Blow Biden outlined a 200-page national coronavirus pandemic strategy, which included a call for the United States government to assess the feasibility of linking COVID-19 vaccination to international certificates of vaccination. vaccination. Mm -hmm. So he wants it to be a global thing. Um, the statements by world leaders comes on the heels of a press camp conference held by the International Air Travel Association, which represents 299 airlines. I didn't even know, know there were that many airlines. On Wednesday, Alexandra de Juniac at the IATA, I don't know what that is, 
um, uh, director general and CEO detailed the upcoming release of the organization's own immunity passport, uh, the IATA travel pass. Uh, so, okay, anyway, the reason I bring this up and the reason I'm talking about this um, is because people knew or some people knew. Some people spoke out loudly about uh, the fact that this is where this this whole corona nonsense was going to go. Um, I just I don't think it is. I think okay. it's I, first of all I think it's uh, I think it's much more a money grab than it's about vaccines. <sighs> well, it's it's about control. I think, I think the vaccines are are just the gambit they're using to get to the money. It, it's all about now, it's all about control, and money is the primary source of control. Yes, that, that's how they that's how the these idiots control populations is 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 monetarily. But and I think this is also a data collect collect collecting um, experiment. Yeah, yeah, I think it's beyond experiment at this time. I think it's already it's 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 in real practice. Um, uh, so, <laughs> and, 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 I, and I think it was all mapped out well ahead of time. And, of course, we know that the, the quote-unquote virus um, was manufactured and released intentionally. Uh, yeah. and, and, and we have that, a doctor here. We have Right now we have a doctor who's out in the media, and he's claiming. I, have, I haven't really seen a lot of it because I, I don't watch the news and all that. Um, but he's claiming that um, 95% of the Danish population was already immune to this sure. uh, virus before it came. Yeah, it's corona. You know, it's it's the cold. Yeah. It's, so, yeah. um, and, and and I, I don't I I still question uh, uh, why why did they change it from corona to COVID since everybody knows it was corona. <clears throat> Besides, with the vaccines, with, then I don't understand the new strains, because all those new strains that are coming are not covered by that vaccine. The Neither variants. Oh, no, 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 no. In the U.S. here, they're saying this new Johnson & Johnson super duper, you don't have to keep it frozen, only needs one shot uh, thing. Um, it will, will handle the variants as well. Not the, but, there was, but then you haven't gotten the new... South African one. <laughs> I, I think the, I think the newest one here is from Brazil. Or is, and oh, we got I mean, the South African one, it, it, and none of the vaccines are working on that one, and it's really, oh, really. Oh, yeah, and it spreads really. So the people that okay. live in the areas, they should get tested at least you know once a day. Okay, let, let's yeah, at least maybe. Yeah. <laughs> right. true, for real, for I, real. I, I believe that. But uh, let, let let's say uh, looking at the um, mortality rate caused by this so-called virus. Um, so let's say everybody in the world had this virus. What would that? What, I mean, we're talking about zero point zero 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 four percent of people actually uh, die from this crap. Um, and and yeah. most of those were pretty much in their deathbeds anyway. Uh, I mean, they're they're you know more people die from hunger, and we could end that. More more people without di- forcing everybody. Uh, more uh, more people <laughs> die. More people die from traffic accidents. Yeah. Um, uh, so <laughs> well, we could actually end world hunger without you know doing silly stuff. Yeah, but then if they did that, how 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 could they? Uh, keep those people in check. The ones that I mean, the ones that are dying of hunger. They want to get rid of them anyway, right? And how could they control the the flow of of uh, the most basic necessities, right? Absolutely. That's what they're doing for all that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then we come back to that fungus paranoia, fungus uh, mold. The right? mold. The ergot LSD. Yeah. 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 They got us all on that shit, Grim. Well, I wish I was on that. I, I'll, I'll, I'll do some. I'll do some LSD. <laughs> no, not that. I think they got like some fungus parasite mold thing. I, I, I'd, I'd like to do LSD with you. 
<laughs> Me? Yeah. I don't know if I know how to. Well, it's really easy. You just put it in your mouth and. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't think I know how to do the trippy trip thing. It's a, that's a, it's a, it's the uh, yeah it's a, it's a uh, it takes you someplace that you've never been and and you'll enjoy it while you're there and and you'll find out things about well everything. Um, that, that that's the that's the key. That's the, the that sounds like walking on a beach. No. Yeah, but maybe a beach on a distant world <laughs> in another uh, galaxy. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where 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 you have the capability of understanding everything? <laughs> Just yeah. never explaining it or articulating it. Oh no, you can certainly do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what uh, free your mind is about, then, huh? Well, I, 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 we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that that's kind of the direction, you know. Try to uh, give sorry, my give my just... give my views, and uh, Moose Girl give her views about uh, some of you know our experiences as they relate to what's going on in the world today. And I think Dodge just wrote your first merchandise uh, line. Who? Duh. Duh. I like. I like <laughs> I like doing acid at the IKEA store. Oh yeah, he had mentioned he I did think that, that. That would be a nice tagline on a uh, T-shirt for your merchandise. You know, I've only been to an IKEA once or twice, and um, what a what a weird ass. I mean, you it's 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 like you're in a rat's maze. You know, um, you walk in one side, you can't go back out that way. You have to go all right. the way right. through. All this crap, and then and then eventually you find the exit, and and they'll put little snacks, you know, like they would in a in a in a mouse maze, you know, like 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 they put the cheese in the mouse maze to get the mice to go to a certain spot. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, somebody is sitting and playing the IKEA game where they can uh, lock and close ex entries and hallways for you and leave little treats for you on the way. And the game plot is to get Grimrir safely through the IKEA maze. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, I, I think it's rare for people to uh, enter an IKEA and leave unless they've made a purchase. Um, Oh, somewhere, somewhere along the way. <laughs> I have done that. Yeah, I, I have I, done that. I've done that. I, I have a this uh, big entertainment center in my living room that I bought there. My mom, you know, I have went through IKEA and not gotten anything. My mom just needed some boxes or something. Okay. Anyway, so and I'm, I, I need boxes, so I'm going to go to IKEA soon. I'm not going to actually go there. I'm just going to go to their website. And that something. would be better. That'd be so much better to go to the IKEA website. Yeah. You know, go. Got, uh, because of the corona, they got this click and collect thing. They got what? It's called, well, it's very big in Denmark because of the COVID-19 paranoia. What's it, it called? Click and collect. Click, click and, collect. and collect. Well, you go to their website and you buy what you need. You pay for it, and then you can go one hour later and pick it up at the store. They don't deliver? Well, they do, but not within the hour. So if you need it like that and you just want it, then you go click and collect. Click and collect. I, I think they call that, uh, what, what do they call that? Touchless payment system over here or something like that. Uh, I, I, they, they've, they've come up with so many new terms uh, around this corona nonsense. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I actually talked about that a lot you know, many months ago, back on uh, uh, the predecessor show to this one. Um, mm -hmm. or yeah, I... we got a whole new NLP set of uh, lingo. Oh yeah, it, it's it's, yeah. it's the paranoia uh, destroyer language got uh, updated to version two point At least, yeah, yeah. Here they mix it a lot with the Muslim scare. Oh. Every time we see a yeah, because every time we that we see a big spike, yeah, in a, you know people can can you know that get the COVID, it's usually in the Muslim areas. Okay, well they do the same here. 
other, but it's beside, but it's not Muslim because apparently they love the Muslims. Uh, but but they, it's against the white people because you're all racist because you're white. Oh. Oh. You were born white, so you were born a racist. Um, oh. So that's how they they mix the uh, corona with racism here. Um, oh, here's Muslims. <laughs> which, which, you know. The Arabs, you know, because they don't read the safety guards, and they meet up in big groups and hug. How dare they? Right, right, right. And, so, and you know, the, some some of the protected uh, races, uh, they, they, you know, like all, all of the, uh, the, the protests and riots on the streets, those were okay because they weren't white people. Or even if there were white people in there, they were involved in whatever group uh, that was out there protesting. Um, so, mm -hmm. so, so yeah. Um, but as soon as the white people went out and protested, uh, for whatever reason, whether it be against the lockdowns or in favor of the orange idiot, uh, uh, then then those were all bad. Those were horrible things because those people were super spreaders uh, because they were white. Uh, <laughs> and didn't didn't believe in the and the uh, the whole socialist agenda. So well, the Black Lives Matter died here, though. Oh, well, they did like they did. They had like this one big Facebook campaign, and then they got like I don't know, maybe a thousand people or something for a big Black Lives Matter protest. Okay. And uh, and then the media gave the microphone to the spokes lady. Right. Of Black Lives Matter in Denmark, and and she turned out to be the most ignorant, uh, racist person ever spoken on Danish media. <laughs> well, the, the, there, there's been a lot of them here. Uh, that, I mean, they, that they've interviewed people at Black Lives Matter, Antifa type crap, and um, they're all freaking morons. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, here uh, a couple of weeks later, she did. They did their second protest. Yeah, and I think twenty five people showed up. Ooh, that'll that'll, that'll, that'll yeah. change stuff. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so and then it sort of just died, right? <laughs> yeah, but but anyway, here if you were you know uh, Black Lives Matter or Antifa and you were out there protesting, it was a okay, perfect, good. You're burning down stores. That was a peaceful protest. You're you're doing you know beating up people for for not looking exactly like you. That was a peaceful protest, but it's because they got the um, the liberal mindset, though, right? Oh. That a, um, ah, ah, a that a, how, someone who is oppressed can never be an oppressor. How how is that liberal? Well, that that would be the uh, liberal mindset, if you okay. ask me. Because if you look, that's at, what it is to me. That's that's how I would express the liberal mindset. Well, if you look at classic liberalism, they were about mm -hmm. freedom. They they were not. Uh, uh, about forcing people to think the way they do. Um, no, they they basically they believed right that this, the role of state was to protect the uh, the individual rights and freedoms, right? Yeah, minimalistic, you know. Yeah. Uh, minarchists. So you think Min, yeah. State. Yeah, min, minarchists are basically classic liberals. Uh, yeah. Libertarians, classic liberals. Um, uh, but, but but I grew up with that, you know, it being about, you know, the, 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 and I think that's a lie, though, but the idea or the concept that somebody who is oppressed cannot be an oppressor. Right, right, yeah. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. The, so the the least oppressing humans on this planet is the uh, handicapped dwarf, lesbian, negro, female, right? I guess so. <laughs> she, can never, she can never oppress anybody, right? I guess not. <laughs> no matter what she does, she will always always be a victim. Is is there, is there? Do you have a dwarf oppression going on over there? No. Oh, okay. I I don't think so. I, I just noticed you threw that in. I think her. dwarfs are pretty much accepted. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, we don't have a dwarf city like they do in China. They have a dwarf city in China? They have a dwarf city in China where all the dwarfs, there are tons of dwarfs live there. Right. And they live in like these little dwarf uh, houses that look like little <laughs> mushrooms. It's hobbiting. And then they, they all work and it's also a uh, amusement park. So, so, so they all work there and doing parades and tricks and they, you know. And they represent 
Yeah, they represent the Lollipop Guild. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's so, yeah. So, so that's all that's, the parts of China can go there and seek work, and they will get an education in like you know, juggling or stuff like that. That's useful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then tourists come and you can live there for like take a vacation in Dwarfland. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's an amusement park. Great. All right. I, I just noticed that you mentioned dwarves in your uh, conglomeration kind of. Uh, I assume, well, you know, that kind of goes with handicap, though, right? I don't know. Is, is being a dwarf being a handicap? I would assume so. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is if you're trying to get something off the high shelf, but uh, <laughs> other than that, I think there are nine kinds of dwarfism. All right. And uh, some of them you can't bend your knees, like some of them, and some of oh. them you can. Oh, well, that would be bad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm really not familiar with dwarves all that much, um, but no, I once met a dwarf that was taller than me, though. What now? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it wasn't really that funny, but everybody else were amused. But well, I was wait, standing wait. in a bar, and next to me, uh, I was standing in a bar, and, uh, and and people started laughing. And I'm going, what? Next to me, this guy, dwarf, is looking down at me. Well, how is he and, a dwarf if he's taller than you? I'm not that tall. And dwarf isn't about how, really not about being, how, you know, tall you are. All right, it, duh. It's, a, it, it's, you know, it's a, it's a way of growing. <laughs> duh, duh is asking, is a dwarf a dwarf? Well, I think I'm dwarf. I'm if I can't pronounce. <laughs> I, I think a dwarf is the individual and dwarves uh, would be dwarf. uh, the multiples, uh, the, mm. not, not in the, you know, the group. Or a couple. If you have two, two dwarfs would be dwarves. Two or more. If they're hanging out together, right? Well, it don't matter if they're hanging out together or not, I don't think. But... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, so I'm not afraid of dwarves. You're talking about oppression, though. Oh, right, right, right. Oppression. Yeah. yeah. Oppression. So don't, don't oppress the dwarves or the dwarf. An individual no. dwarf or the multiple dwarves, oh. or anybody else. Don't oppress anybody. That would be the that would be the key right there. And don't. But we we're almost getting through a show, not even mentioning dwarves. Rasputin again. was no dwarf. He wasn't. No, he was. I don't I think so. He was apparently a big old lover of the ladies, and and the ladies loved him. So I, I, don't, I don't. I mean, I don't know. Maybe ladies love dwarfs because I mean. <laughs> I ain't uh, even, even gonna say it. Um, <laughs> okay, when I was, I think I was like thirteen or fourteen or something, mm -hmm. uh, and we'd been down behind the school and smoking spliff. And one of the bigger kids said, "You want to come to my place?" I got dwarf porn, and I think five or six <laughs> of us went to his um, his mom's place where he was living and he had this old videotape stuck under his mattress and he put it on and it was dwarf porn. Dwarf porn. Yeah, porn with the dwarf. All right. Well, that's... Uh... <laughs> and then we watched that for five minutes and then he put on um, Freddy Krueger. And we watched Freddy Krueger. Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, yeah. that's that's a nice transition from... Dwarf porn to horror. <laughs> <laughs> it did not make me paranoid, though. Did Did you ever see the well, movie? Well, yeah, the Nightmare on Elm Street kind of made me paranoid. When you went to sleep? Yeah, for a long, for many years. <laughs> well, you know, it's like Jaws. The movie Jaws apparently freaked people out from going swimming because they all thought suddenly there was going to be a shark swimming up and biting them in half, um, which... Really? <laughs> really? I mean, you, you've been out there swimming your entire life. A shark ain't come up and bit you in half yet. Uh, so, so it's, it's, it's funny where the fear uh, drives the paranoia uh, through various methods. Uh, that being, you know, one of them, of course. Um, Especially because um, I believe cows 
kill a lot more people than sharks do in America, right? I guess. I mean, there's certainly a lot more cows and... Um, a lot more people, and, you know, get and, kicked in the head by cows than beaten by sharks. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't have those statistics available presently. Um, <laughs> Pretty sure you can Google them and they'll be right there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, God. Because <laughs> yes. it's just, it's so, it's ridiculous to fear the right. It is. It is. So that's the point of this show. When you're we finally got to the point, we got five minutes left. Four. Uh, anyway, Four. When, when, <laughs> when you're taking in information from whatever source it may be, uh, and they're telling you uh, this, this is the horrible thing. This is all the bad stuff that's got to happen. And in order for you to uh, do this, you need to be afraid. You need to be afraid of things. They're driving that paranoia. They're pushing you with that paranoia. Don't believe them. Look look behind what they're saying and understand that they use words to try and convince you that what you're being told by them is only there to control you. It's not yeah. there because it's real. It, it, it's, it, it is absolutely total control. And in this, I, I read. I read some. You know, I was reading Foucault, right? The guy on the discourse, and he did. He did a lot of writing on power. Okay. And he he did a very interesting breakdown of what information and knowledge is, right? All right. And uh, and and he he said, and I, I I think that's very true. He said that uh, it's within information's nature to alter behavior. Sure. So that's what information really does, is it alters behavior. Right, and it's up to you to comprehend. So you can look at a piece of information without looking at who gave it to you or what can it mean and all that. You can look at it as what does it, which behavior does it alter? Absolutely. What kind of change yeah, does it yeah. produce? Right. Because that yeah. will tell you about what the intention or what the, what the information is going to do to you. Absolutely. Because most of life is not about learning. There is It's just as much about um, being conscious with what you want to learn and what you don't want to learn. And what direction you take that. Yes. Because there is tons of, of knowledge and information and in that also conclusions and wisdom that I don't want to build. I like I like my naivety, right? I like trusting people, for instance. You are a little naive. I like that. So yeah. to protect my trust in people and what is good, I, I don't want to learn too much about what isn't. Okay, that's good. You don't. There's no need to know. Well, might, might I don't be. want I don't it know. to alter me. I don't want the understanding that there are nasty dickhead psychos out there who, and, and most of them, I'm just going to go with um, most of those are within the ruling class. So as long as I stay clear and I know what the ruling class is going to do, because they're psycho warmongering, uh, blood drinking satanic. <laughs> yes, they are. Right? Yes, they are. Baby eaters. That's what I, that I wanted to learn. Check mark, right? Yeah. But I don't want to learn about how nasty my, my neighbor might be. He might be a baby eater, too. We don't know. Nah. You Most don't know? People are good people. Most people but, are. But there is truly the idea of taking a piece of information, looking at how what kind of alteration to your um, behavior it seeks to do, and then rejecting it. Right. Because there are a lot of things I don't want to learn. Yeah, that's probably good, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, whatever you're going to learn from us today is over because we're done. Um, <laughs> yeah. We'll be and back. It all, we, we, can, we boiled it all down to fungus, right? Fungus. You brought the fungus among us. Oh, it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so thanks, everybody, for tuning in that did tune in. 
Uh, we'll be back next Monday with another. And don't be super spreaders. Don't be. Well, fear paranoia. Don't be super spreaders of the paranoia vibe. Don't spread the paranoia. Spread the legs. Yeah. Spread oh. the love. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we'll be back next Monday with another episode, uh, hopefully. And stop giving Grimnir money. It's over now. No, you can keep giving me money. Okay, keep giving Grimnir money. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Yeah. I'll I'll take money any time for any purpose. <laughs> I don't care. But don't expect anything in return because it ain't coming. Um, no. <laughs> You are, of course, the ruler of the planet, Grimnir. So uh, well, good. no, no. I think I made Flash the ruler of the planet. No, I overruled you, that. You didn't realize that you were living with, with the global ruler, did you? No, I uh, overruled it. Yeah, yeah, no, Flash is... Flash. I speak with a silent majority. Flash, Flash is the commander of the world. Yes. I forget what we were talking about, but it came out that he should be in. All right, so on uh, Wednesday, uh, me and Mosey will be on here uh, with... And I, we haven't picked the time yet. Oh, I think we have. I think it's 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, uh, uh, with... Uh, Free your mind. Free your freaking mind. Um, and then, and then yeah. on Friday is a Vin E. It's, he does his show so easily um, at uh, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Eastern, and, and it's uh, called American Dissonance. Uh, then on Saturday, the new show, the new guy, uh, Red Neck Dentist, uh, com <laughs> comes on at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, check him out, man. It's a good show. And... Uh, We'll, we'll see. It where, won't where... pull your teeth out. Right? He might. He just might. Oh. I mean, if you ask him, if, if, if he, he said, as a dentist, he doesn't do any unnecessary procedures. Uh, but if mm. you say, hey, I want these teeth out, that might that would be necessary then, right? Mm. And um, uh, that was what Saturday, Sunday is. I play the blues in the morning. Hal comes on in the afternoon, and Gary on in the evening. It's a full day of broadcasting here on Sunday, man. Um, That's uh, three strikes. And then no, out. those are those are three home runs. Those oh, it strikes not a good thing then. Well, well, when you when you swing at the ball and miss, that's a strike. And and oh, and if oh. you and if you get well, three, three home runs, three Ooh, home runs. <laughs> I gotta talk to Beetle. Then he's been striking me for ages. That mother striker. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. Appreciate it. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to y'all later. Yeah, Peace. have a good one.